And welcome to another player profile and projection brought to you by Talking the Yanks, which is brought to you by DraftKings, which is brought to you by whoever invested and put together DraftKings. I don't know their names, but Jake's here and I'm here and we're going to talk about Aaron Hicks. Hits one to the sticks. How you doing? Jim, beautiful baby David, our friend. Aaron Hicks, Jim, what a roller coaster it's been for us and Hicksy. I'll be honest, at first, you and I were somewhat on the wrong end of the stick. We were feeling out this whole Hicksy thing. He was good, he had one slump, and he was taking a lot of pitches, and he's got the cannon, and then nobody tested him for a while. Jim, Aaron Hicks has been really good for the Yankees, and... I think he's grown on us a lot more after seeing his approach and and seeing how it works. Also, there's been a little bit of development, man, as as he's played more games. He attacks pitches in the zone. He he feels like the signature Marcus Timms, like get your A swing off or take a ball. And uh, there's not many players in baseball better at taking bases on balls than Aaron Hicks. Uh, a switch hitting center fielder with power. You're going to see there's a short list of guys who do that. Ian Happ, John Boy Media. But. Bernie Williams, old. My dad. Uh, Aaron Hicks, man, he's been really good when he's out there. He was still coming off of the, the Tommy John. He had Tommy John, right? Or did he get it done? No, he had Tommy John. And he said he was. He said last year, like, he was really playing injured. Like, he wasn't himself. What was yeah. his quote? It was something like that. I was like, whoa, okay. He played 54 games last year. He was a mainstay in a season that saw a lot of non-mainstays, but uh, I'm going to be honest, I was like blanking on, it's kind of a black hole in my memory of what he did last year, what he didn't do last year, what he did in the postseason, what he didn't do in the postseason, uh, where like, you know, years before he had the home run off of Verlander in the postseason, he had the crazy game-ending catch uh, in the Twins. There's a lot of memories I have. Last year, I don't remember much. I remember it feeling like, he was one step slower in the outfield or just one step slower hustle-wise in the outfield. I don't think it was hustle. I think it was from just a lack of playing, if you remember, because he wasn't going to start the season, right? So he didn't play in spring training, if I'm remembering correctly, but then he was back for summer camp, and then he was playing those summer camp games, and he took a couple funky routes, and we were thrown off, and then... He's kind of right. I mean, last season he felt just a little bit off, and it's it's funny saying that now looking at the numbers. I mean, he had a 793 OPS. He got on base at a 379 clip, which is insane. More walks than strikeouts. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Hicksy. Did, did he have more walks than hits? Uh, let me see. He did. He had 38 hits. He had 41 walks. He had 38 strikeouts. That's so weird. It's, I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to wrap my head around that. Because like, yes, his OPS plus, which grades you against your contemporaries, right? Was 121. Really good. 21% better than the league average player offensively. And it's because he walks so much. And, like, when he did hit, he had, well, he had 12. No, he had 18 of his 38 hits were extra base hits. So when he did hit, it was a good amount of extra base hits. But, yeah, I mean, I, uh, like, that's good, right? The stats show that he's good offensively. I, I, there's a lot of things on the older fans, you know, pitcher wins, which Jake's bringing back, but still I don't think matter. A lot of things I would argue, like, you know, you got to understand, Grandpa. That's not how we view it anymore. That's not really a good measurement of it. I don't know if there's any winning over Grandpas that, like, these numbers are above average. It's an interesting 
It's an interesting And I don't think question. I'd even try to do it. But I know that they are, and I think the younger fans like do value on base percentage and all the analytics more, but I wouldn't even try. I think anyone that's 50 or older, 60 or older, sees Aaron Hicks' stat line last year and goes, that guy's a bum. But I know it's not true, but I don't think it's worth arguing because it's so weird. This is how I've always been on Hicks. Yeah, and it's it's those are the batting average truthers. And I mean, I I said if we had Aaron Hicks on right now, I think he'd tell you that two twenty five from last year is is too low. Um, with the Yankees, he's got a two forty batting average. Um, I'd say you know that's almost the over under for me. And I don't know when Hicks is right. I I I think he is a better hitter than that. I mean, twenty eighteen. His last full season, 137 games. He did have more hits than walk. Um, 248, a 366 more on walks, base. More walks than hits. In 2018, oh, oh, oh. his last full season, uh, he had more hits than walks. Um, you know, 248, a 366 on base, and 833 OPS. I mean, if, if that's what Aaron Hicks is giving you, that's a very valuable ball player. Um, it is going to be interesting to track the defense. I, I don't know if we've seen a ton of it this spring. It did seem last year just a little bit off. It, it never became problematic, uh, but it just didn't seem like kind of the gliding Aaron Hicks we we became familiar with. I don't know where, where Katie Sharp finds those, like, um, remember there was, Catch like... percentages? Yeah, stuff? yeah, like, and there was, like, a five-star play yeah. or, you know, that. And I don't know if he had many of those, and, yeah, I don't, I don't he know. He can make them. I mean, that Twins game you referenced before, one of the crazier games in recent Yankee memory, I mean, that ball he snagged down off of Chad Green. That was an amazing catch after hitting the home run uh, to give the Yankees the lead before that. So he's entering his age 31 season, and I think the other thing, Jimbo, if I can call you that. Like his sprint speed was way down the last two years, so we'll we'll see. It's definitely something to track. He uh, He's going to be with the Yanks for a while. He signed that extension. He's going to be with the Yanks till at least 2025. So Aaron Hicks is... Is, is here to stay. The Yanks love what he does. Um, I feel like we were hard on him. At times there was frustrating takes, even in 2017, 2018. It seems like those are a lot fewer, and there's some of the advanced stats to back that up with, you know, swinging at pitches in the zone. He, he replies to our, <laughs> our Instagram saying, I'm trying to hit guys. I really am. So I don't know, man. I'm it's definitely going to be something to track with Hixie for this season because that's also going to project kind of the next few years. When Hicks signed that extension, we thought there'd be a world where, you know, he probably eventually drifts over to left field or something of that nature. Uh, you know, does he have a couple more years in center? Does he not? I, I think that's going to be interesting to watch with the sprint speed and how he's pursuing balls. Uh, he's out there and says he wants to hit 30 plus dingers this year he's got home runs on the mind he's very much the modern a player he's trying to hit dingers he's trying to drive the ball and he's trying to take walks i wonder how much last year there was that sense and i'm not knocking him at all for this like that sense of like hey you know not a real ramp up uh need to stay healthy let's take it easy let's not do too much in defense and offense like i wonder how much some of his numbers will go back to the norm or if he made changes uh, one I'm definitely looking at is the chase rate. It dropped crazily. Uh, league average chase percentage on swinging at balls out of the zone is 28%. Uh, his career average is 20. Last year, he was at 15%. It's the lowest of his career. He really did not chase pitches out of the zone at all. Uh, he was at an 82% meatball swing, which is the highest he's had since 2016 when he was a... Uh, kind of a bench player, so high set as a starter where, all right, well, if I get the pitch right down the middle, I'm going to swing big. So, was, But, I mean, he's always had a great eye. Like, in spring training, it's making me laugh because pitchers are just walking him, and it's like, he's like got two strikes on him, so one and two, oh and two, and then all of a sudden, you've walked Hicks. It's like, what happened? He just doesn't swing at anything that's outside of the zone? It's like, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Even when he does, he's like his contact is pretty high. His contact on when he swings out of the zone is uh, league average. Oh, I've got some fun, Jim. Yeah. Last year, his OPS versus righties seven ninety three. OPS versus lefties seven ninety three. I saw Sweeney Murdy tweet out something like, "If anyone's going to 
If Gardner's going to platoon for anyone against righties, it might be Hicks, not Clint. Well, so what splits was he looking at? He might be looking at the career numbers because uh, in 2018, and we, you know, I think the other thing that plays in Aaron Hicks is career numbers. I mean, he is a very different player than when he first came over from the Twins. I mean, even that first year with the Yankees. Uh, because, yeah, you know, his, in 2018, he had an 845 OPS versus righties and an 801 against lefties. So he was better versus righties. His career, I mean, it's it's kind of a corn toss. It's mm. It's pretty much split. I do feel in recent years he's... He's a little better lefty. He's kind of a better contact hitter righty. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know about all that. I, I, I never picture him righty. If you were to tell me to close my eyes and picture Hicks, I always picture him lefty. Well, I know it's funny about that. I was in the same boat, but he had those few pinch hit home runs. Against Tampa. Tampa That's the and one, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were the, both righty. They switched him around to yeah. do that, and then he took him yard ski. So, um, yeah, man, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I think the other thing that we need to talk about is his spot in the lineup. It's one of the bigger discussions in Yankee land. Uh, Aaron Boone has come out and said he's going to hit third. They like him splitting up the big guys, and he sees a bunch of pitches. So it's uh, it can be a point of frustration because I think on a pure talent level, hitting-wise, everything being equal, I mean, you lean DJ, Judge, Stanton, Glaber, Heck, Voigt, I think, has earned that after his his years with the Yankees. But being a switch hitter, breaking up those guys, there is value there. And uh, it's just that weird juxtaposition of, you know, when Stanton and Voigt are right, put a ball near the zone and they're going to mash, where Hicks is, he's going to be Hicks. <laughs> whether he's hot or whether he's slumping, like, he's going to see a lot of pitches and he's going to do his thing. What, confu- what confuses me, okay, okay, is, man, last year he started 52 games or something like that. 32 of them came in the three hole. I don't think I would have guessed that. Like, it's not mm-hmm. kind of like what my memory says. And then in the playoffs, he was three hole, like every game. Like, I mean, we can all think what we want about where he's going to hit. He's going to hit in the three hole. Yeah. He was three hole all playoffs. Yeah, I went through every playoff game. Now he was three hole, and he hit in the three hole thirty two games. He started eight leading off when DJ was out. Remember DJ that finger thing? Right. Now besides that, it was three hole Hicks. Um, you know he got five at cleanup and four at the five hole. No, five at the six hole and, and four and seven. I think one, two, three, four, five and six, five and five and four and whatever number was. But yeah, I mean. We should stop debating it, really. Yeah. We should stop being like, I think this, I think that, because he's going to hit in the three-hole. Yeah. I'm trying to think back in 2019. Did they shift them down? I'm trying to remember. I can pull it up real fast. On the playoffs, he got one, two, three, four, five games, four starts. Nine-hole, three-hole, five-hole, four-hole. They moved him around a lot. Because he came back in the ALCS. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, he was hurt, so that's, hit that big home run. In the regular yeah. season, he had 22 st- in 2019, 22 starts in the three-hole, 10 in the two-hole, uh, six, four, seven in the leading off. And, hey, last playoffs. Uh, I gave you my heart. Last playoffs, I gave you my No, last playoffs, he was good. In the seven games the Yankees played, 308 batting average, a 424 on base, and an 847 OPS, so... He was doing Hicksy things, drawing walks, you know, hitting the ball, hitting the ball pretty well. And he had that huge home run off of Verlander the year before. So, what arm got Tommy John? Is it a throwing arm? I believe so. Yeah, because it's his lefty. Like, so I'd like to see arm. his arm get tested more. He's got yeah. a great arm. I mean, it, it got to the point where teams didn't run on him at all. That's why big reason why he played over Ellsbury in 2017 playoffs is because they knew no one would run on his arm. Yeah. I don't think he ever really got to. I don't think he ever really aired it out during the season last year. I don't. Remember. No, it was literally one or two times. I remember we said it on our podcast, and we're like, "Oh, Hicks threw one." Like it was of note. It, it didn't say look maybe like one of those during that Mets series or something. It it didn't look full on. bore Aaron Hicks, but it was it was on the way to Aaron Hicks, and I I think he's talked about it this preseason that he wasn't fully healthy and it, that he's he's feeling better. So I don't know, man. I mean, this is. This is what, his fourth year with the Yankees? His fifth? 
One, two, 16, three, four, seven. five, six. Yeah, he's been around. I, I mean, think as far as like on the major league roster, besides Gardner, he might be the longest tenured, which is pretty nuts. I mean, he's five years with the Yankees, ten. and his contract has one, two, three, four, five more and an option for six. So, like, Aaron Hicks is kind of a mainstay with these Yankees, barring something unexpected. So, Dude, Hicks. Okay, so I found I was searching for a throw from last year, but I didn't find one. Sure. But I found I found this tweet. Sucks that Hicks got thrown out at third, but he's clearly trying to play with some spark and spirit. So that's nice. I think that was during the Blue Jays when they were like going through that embarrassing yeah. stretch, and Hicks was just running. Remember? Yeah. So let's have Hicks run more. Running Hicks. I like that. I I like his eye. I, I think I've I think I've decided that I am rooting for Hicks to walk every at bat. I'm Every fully buying season. in. Like if it's it's walk or extra base hits. I think I'm going full Joey Gallo on him. If Hicks hits a single, I'm going to be like, why Boring. don't you just walk, dude? Boring. Boring. Walk. Walk somewhere. I'm going to get excited for Hicks walks. That's where I'm at. That's where I was okay. in the last spring training at bat when Wheeler was cruising through. Like he got through DJ. He got through Judge. Uh, and then he got to Hicks and it was like 1-2. And then all of a sudden, he tries the breaking ball. Hicks doesn't even think about it. He tries a fastball outside. Hicks doesn't even look at it. Yeah. Then he tried a little, like, breaking ball top of the zone. And Hicks just, like, stared at it and walked. And I was like, I, like, laughed. I was like, ha! And I think Ruko was like, and somehow Hicks has found another way to walk. So yeah. I am now a Aaron Hicks walk enthusiast. Okay. I'll, I'll go a different angle at that. And a, a t- hashtag goals. I, I think Aaron Hicks gets batting average off the yes screen in his career. I don't know if it's 2023. I don't know if it's 2024. I think Aaron Hicks could be the guy that gets batting average off the screen. Because the yes now because the Yankees fans and like they, complaining about they it. They go to on base. So you know, one guy it's important to set goals. I oh could, yeah, I could see that in Hicks's. I mean, I just set a goal to be a Hicks walk enthusiast. Yeah, it's setting loose goals. That's what the goals people don't get. Like achievable goal. Like strive for something. But don't make it, like, too specific. Yeah. I, like, wake up every night. I have a wake up on my to-do list. You wake up every night. No, every night. Every night. I'm saying, like, wake up. That's a good goal. Ah, every night, I put wake up on my to-do right list. into your goals. Okay. And as soon as I wake up, I've crossed something off my list for the day. That's a You've hell of a way goal. to, yeah, it's a hell of a way to start your day. Did it. Task number one, done. What's his um I want to find his first pitch career numbers. Like if Hicks swings at first pitches, I want them to be Birdzerk. You can find that. I can find that. I'm looking for I that. can try and find it for you as well if you want me to. Bases There's like a first pitch, first pitch of that. First yeah. pitch mm-hmm. in his career, 317 batting average and 883 OPS, 18 home runs. So I want all those numbers up. Those are my personal goals. That's pretty good. It's not bad. 317 batting average on the first pitch? I mean, those are his career numbers. I would bet they're better in recent Hicks good years. Yeah, so like he had an 8, 898 OPS in 2018, his last. Okay, what years do you want me to track? 17, 18, 19, and 20? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like last year. Here we go. Last year he had a and 1.3. We, we, want, we, we want to track when he swings at the first pitch. Yes. He had a 1.3 last year. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Catch them pitchers sleeping. Catch the pitchers sleeping. You sleeping? Hey, pitch. Are you sleeping? You sleeping? Well, in his career, while you're doing those numbers, 90 career hits on the first pitch, 57 of those are for extra bases. Or are not for extra bases, so it's just under half. 57. He has swung at 214 first pitches of the at bat since 2017. I'm going to graph and do uh, what do we want? Spray chart, pitch breakdown. Normal like results chart. Results. Um, no, that's not what I want. Not what he wants. Pitch chart? Pitch chart? 
No, they were all like in the zone. You know what? Why does I find this? Because I'm going to find it. Sure. Pitch breakdown? What? Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. You're going to love this, Jake. I'm going to love Maybe this. Maybe I'll screenshot this for BBD and you can put it on screen. For a Huge. Um, look. So when he swung at the first pitch since 2017, 36% of the time he swung through it. Just a complete whiff. In on that. Uh, zero foul balls. That's kind of... Oh. No way. He's never swung at the first pitch and fouled it off since 20, in, in, in the last five years. Like 17, 18, and the last four years. Like 19% of the time it's a hit. Um, I think these are the combined. Might need to tighten this up. You might need to tighten How is the foul ball thing real? Maybe did you do like first pitch and play or something? No, just did first. I just did first pitch. Oh, here, here. I can do. I can make this much easier. Make it much easier. I can just do all swings, and now they'll eliminate the things that we don't want. Three hundred and thirty. Okay. Wow. This is going to be good. We're still at. Okay. All right. We have one hundred and eleven foul balls now. Thank okay. God. Thank God. Thank God. Screenshot that too. I guess. I did. I, I guess I didn't click. Like include foul balls. He's got a hit. He's put the ball in play 30, 40% of the time. Hit, put the ball in play 40% of the time. He's got a hit 12%. I mean, I, I think the batting average is probably pretty good there. Okay. So when he puts it in play, I mean, it's 317 or whatever. So, okay, you want that up? I want first pitch hits or walks. Okay. I'd like him to no be in the top 10 of pitches per plate appearance again. He He's, was in the top 10 in 19. He was in the top 10 in 18, I think, or 18 and 20. So he's like 4.6 or 4.3 pitches per plate appearance. So in the whole league, that's pretty good. And then, yeah, I'm a walk enthusiast. Like, I'm going to clap for walks. Even when there's bases loaded, he gets the RBI walk when a double scores more. Uh, I'll cheer for it. And I want the opposite of Mike Talkman where Mike Talkman didn't have a hit on a pitch in the zone. I want his chase rate outside of the zone. Gone. Zero. Not zero. Perfect game. We demand excellence. Pinstripes. He could not have a single single all year, and I'm saying it. I'm on board. Okay. Should he stretch out singles? To doubles, even if they're just a natural single and he's out by a lot? Can I ask you a question? Yes. If he goes 0 for 3 mm-hmm. every game with a walk, is that an on-base percentage of 250? Okay. So we need, we need we some, those we need some two yeah. walk games. I want, what How about he, 0 for 2 with two walks every game? That'd be a 500, 500 on, base on base Zero okay. batting average. I'd take that. But I wouldn't take that. I need 30 hits, all home runs. All home runs. Okay. Becoming very specific. Baseball reference. They're not going to have this. Has that They're exact stat line. They do? Okay. 30 home runs, a 500 on base. No, no so double. cut out. No doubles, no singles. They have with a 76% reliability, Jim. Wow. Pretty oh, so brave of baseball reference. 510 plate appearances. Um, Is that a full season? Uh, in 137, he had 581. So I'd call it like 125 or so. Um, you just said something weird. Math. You said in 137, he had 581. In 137 games, he had oh. 581 plate I was, appearances. I was searching for a year there. That's okay. They project him four. A 235 batting average, a 349 on base, a 778 OPS, 20 home runs. I don't like that. All those feel a little low. If you're going to be an on base guy, you need to be 370 on base or higher. Yeah, I was going to say 36. If you're going to have a 230 batting average, yeah. I'd like a 37 on base percentage. Okay. With 30 home runs, 25 home runs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, as you can see, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the, the game that Hicks plays. Right. But I, I understand that it's good and successful and on-base percentage works, and then he does 
hit balls well when he does hit them. So, you know, zero singles, zero doubles, zero triples, 30 home runs, uh, two walks every game. I think I'll go OPS on you. I think it's got to start with an eight. Anything below that's kind of disappointing for Hicksy. Yeah. If, yeah. Especially if the defense isn't going to be his full-on calling card. Because like you're saying, I mean, that Ellsbury year, I mean, I know Ellsbury's people like to throw him in front of the bus and semi-deservedly so. Stay tuned for our documentary, Finding Jacoby Ellsbury. Finding Jacoby coming up soon. Uh, Jacoby was hot heading into those playoffs, and Hicks played every day because of his defense. So if the defense isn't going to be a full-blown Aaron Hicks calling card, I think the OPS got to be got to be near eight, if not eight. Guardy coming for his job in center. Guardy's coming for literally everyone's job. Yeah, that should be a theme of the season. Yes, Guardy's coming. Guardy's coming for your job. I like that. Judge, watch out. Yeah. Stan, he'll DH. It should be like if Guardy's coming for your job, and if Guardy does get your job, you have to shave your head bald. Ooh. And then it's like, Guardy just leaves his mark on the team. Damn. By the end, they just look like a swimming team. First base guard. And Guardy doesn't cut his hair all season. So we end the year. Everyone's bald. So every job he takes, he has to glue their hair yeah. on. Oh, his head. okay. okay. Yeah, collect, like collect, well, I was going to say like collecting um, what the natives did. Scalps. scalps. Yeah, collecting scalps. Yeah. But I wanted Guardy to hurt anyone. No. Just a lock of hair. Scotch tape, one lock. Guardy's coming. Guardy's coming. Have a good year, Hicks. Did we do Max's thing? Max has the over-under for Aaron Hicks, 39 and a half bat-flipped walks. Way up. Those are rookie numbers. He He had 41 last year. How many walks is he going to have? That many he will bat flip on. Yeah. Every walk he will bat flip on, and he's going to have like 90 walks. So I'd almost double Max's over under. I've got a goal of 100 walks. He bat flips every walk. I don't think I've seen him not bat flip a walk. I want to see 100 walks at Aaron Hicks this year. So we have a lot of goals for Hicks. A lot of goals. Goal season. Zero singles. One point, one and a half walks every game. Every game. What does that leave you at? I mean, 162 times one and a half is 300. And then 200. And he'll get five plate appearances in a lot of days because he's batting three holes. It'd be 243 walks. I'm putting that on the high end. <laughs> but he has no hits. He plays every day. <laughs> 243, four times 162 equals 648. 243 divided by 648. That was 375 on base percentage. It's far far. One and a half walks every game, no hits, 30 hits that are all home runs. Bam. Lock it in. I am an Aaron Hicks walk enthusiast. O2. Let's get the walk. Four more pitches. 2-0. Don't swing. Let's get that walk, baby. <laughs> 